Hi. In this video, we will demonstrate some important features of a wireless charger for mobile phones. First, let's open a wireless charger and have a brief look at the circuit. This board is built with our proprietary chipset, so the circuit looks quite simple. The proprietary chipset includes a WPC Qi compliant transmitter controller and a dedicated MOSFET driver. In the middle, there is a transmitter coil. The MOSFET driver drives four MOSFETs in these two chips. The four MOSFETs form an H-bridge converter to generate an AC power source and the AC power source is fed into the coil to generate an electromagnetic field. Through the induction of the electromagnetic field, the power is transferred wirelessly. This charger is designed for the out power of 5 watts. It can deliver up to 1 amp charging current, and the maximum efficiency is close to 80%. Later on, we will look at the AC signal on the coil to show you some important features of a wireless charger. Currently, there is nothing on top of the coil the charger is in standby mode. Let us use a scope to see what the charger is doing in the standby mode. OK, the probe is hooked to the coil. We can see the short pulses are generated on the coil. These short pulses are used for detecting if a mobile phone is placed on top of the coil. The pulses are generated about four times per second to minimize the standby power. Normally, the standby power can be controlled under 50 milliwatts. When a phone is put on, charging starts straight away. A continuous AC signal can be observed on the transmitting coil and the blue LED is on. The frequency of the AC signal varies between 110k to 205kHz depending on the power demand from the receiver side. The higher the frequency is, the lower power gets delivered. Now, how does the transmitter know how much power is needed on the receiver side? The answer is, while a wireless power is being transferred, there is also wireless communication between the two sides. Let's zoom out to get a big picture of the communication signal. Here we can see a square shaped envelope of a communication packet. This is amplitude modulated signal. A communication packet is comprised of preamble, header, message and checksum. The messages are sent from the mobile phone being charged. The messages include configuration, identification, received power, percentage to the target voltage and end power transfer to request a termination of a power transfer. The communication board rate is 2 k bits per second. These are the standard WPC Qi messages. Well, if you want to add your own messages, your customised messages can be inserted by modifying the firmware in our proprietary controlling chip. The communication signal normally is demodulated with analogue circuits including envelope detector, low pass filters and a comparator to get the digital communication signal. But our proprietary controller chip uses 100% digital demodulation. The voltage of the coil is digitized inside the chip. Then, through our proprietary digital signal processing algorithm to get the digital communication signal. Compared with the analog demodulation, digital demodulation is more robust. The envelope which an analog demodulation depends on 
can become very shallow or severely distorted, caused by coil coupling, frequency, interference and large gaps. Digital demodulation requires very few passive components to save the bomb cost and board space. In addition, some demodulation parameters can be modified dynamically by the firmware in the controller chip. When the charger detects a phone is removed, the charger returns to standby mode. Next we will show you a very important safety feature, the metal object detection. As we know, if a metal object is exposed into a changing magnetic field, eddy current will be induced and it heats up the metal object. This could melt the surface of a charger or a mobile phone being charged. A metal object such as a coin can be heated over 60 degrees by charging magnetic field within a minute. So, if a metal object is on top of the coil, the charging should be terminated. Now we will use a small coin to demonstrate this safety feature. Here is a New Zealand 20 cent coin. Let's attach the coin on the back of the phone, then put the phone on the charger and see what happens. We can see that the charger detects a phone and starts charging, but after two to three seconds, the charger detects the coin and stops charging. The red LED flashes quickly to indicate a safety issue has been detected. All right, we have demonstrated some important features of a wireless charger. For more information, please visit us at www.intdevice.co.nz. Thank you for watching.